Hello all, my name is Ayush Bisoy from grade 8 and now we'll be studying chapter 4 of our science textbook that is materials, metals and non-metals. So let's get started. So now first we have to understand what is mainly metals and non-metals. For this we have to know some terms like atoms, molecules and elements. If you know what is elements, elements are a group of same atoms and we know atoms are the smallest building particles of an um, a matter. So elements can be like iron, cobalt, nickel, copper etc. So metals uh, and non-metals are two types of elements. If we go forward, we will be learning that there are 118 elements out of which 94 elements are naturally occurring. So, there are three types of elements, non-metals, metals and metalloids. And now we will be classifying them according to their physical properties and their chemical properties. So first we have to study their physical properties. So we will start with the physical properties of metals first. So, first check is luster. What is luster? Luster is shine. We know that metals shine like iron, gold, silver etc have a shine in them. In case of metals, uh, are non-metals. Non-metals like... Non-metals are, are like graphite or like um, something like carbon etc. So we know that carbon, so potassium and all don't have any luster, they are very dull. So metals are lustrous whereas non-metals are dull. Then next, next is hardness. So we know that metals are hard. When we, we know iron or steel rods, they are very hard. But non-metals like graphite, you know the pencil nib, those are made of graphite and those break very easily. Carbon or potassium also can, potassium in room temperature can also be cut. So non-metals are very brittle also. Brittle in means they are hard but when you try to uh, break them, they break very easily. Whereas metals are hard but they are easily breakable. So they are brittle. Next is malleability. What is malleability? The ability to beat in, uh, any metal or non-metal into thin sheets. We know aluminium foils or silver foils um, which are made uh, for uh, covering food items as we have used it. So this is the malleability. They beat the metals into thin sheets. So. Malleable. And non-metals, non-metals we know they are brittle. So if we try to hammer them, then they are going to break down. So they are not malleable. Not malleable. Next is ductile. What is ductile? We have seen copper uh, wires. So uh, ductile is the property in which any metal can be beaten into wires. So, we know copper wires or aluminium wires also or silver wires. So, metals can are ductile. And non-metals are again not ductile because they are brittle. Now, next is sonorous. What is sonorous? We have seen that when we beat any type of metal, so the resound and echo again. Now you, we have seen bells in temples. When we ring it, it echoes again and again. So that is called sonorous. And metals again are not sonorous. I mean non-metals, sorry. Now next. Next is conductivity. We know electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity. Here both of them are going to be taken as one term that is conductivity. So metals we know. Metals have thermal conductivity and electrical con conductivity. Sorry. So when we have tested this many times in last year and last to last year where we have been trying to conduct electricity through switches and when we have kept metals like keys etc then the 
uh, electricity passes through it which means they are conductors so metals are conductors whereas non metals like rubber uh, graphite uh, uh, graphite is an exception to the non metals there are many exceptions which we will be learning next so except graphite every non metal is a non con is uh, not conductive and when we take thermal uh, metals are also thermally conductive because we have seen when metals are kept steel steel gets uh, heated up very fast so metals are conductive conductive and these are not conductive they are poor conductors so these are where the all properties or the physical properties now we will be seeing some exceptions um, exceptions in non metals to the, to the properties given to them let's see now we will be seeing some um, exceptions in metals and non metals to the physical properties that we have learned so first one is mercury and gallium they both are metals but at room temperature they are in liquid form they are the only metals to be in liquid form at room temperature so mercury mercury and gallium these are the symbols so these both are the metals which are uh, are the only metals which are in liquid form in room temperature second all metals have very high melting points but mercury is the only metal which has very low melting point so again mercury ha mercury has a very low melting point third one metals are generally metals generally um, sink in water because they have very high density but lithium sodium and potassium are the only metals which do not sink lithium lithium sodium and potassium are the only metals which do not sink because they are the only metals which have low density the and most of the non metals have very low density but the exception is diamond diamond has really very high density and is a allotrope of carbon what is allotrope allotropes are the different forms of carbon in different states another one the fifth one is iodine iodine is the only non metal which is lustrous that is iodine is very shiny sixth is graphite graphite is the only non metal which can conduct electricity so when we have tried to pass electricity through the nib of um, a pencil the electricity passes so these are the exceptions now we will be going into chemical properties now we will be seeing the chemical properties of metals and non metals first one is reaction with oxygen so reaction with oxygen so what do you mean by reaction with oxygen any metal or non metal which reacts with oxygen or forms oxides are uh, is known as to be reacted with oxygen so first we have to check uh, with metals Ma um, take magnesium in last year we learned that when magnesium ribbon is burnt in air so it becomes um, it reacts with oxygen and forms mgo so that is magnesium oxide and now if we mix magnesium oxide with water that is h2o then we get um, mgoh2 that is magnesium hydroxide and that is a basic as we have tested it with lit um, with litmus paper so it can be magnesium so it is going to be mg magnesium mg plus o will become mgo that is magnesium plus oxygen that is when magnesium is burned it it reacts with oxygen as we know that for burning from the process of combustion we need oxygen so it um, reacts and it becomes mgo now when we add this ashes so after burning we get ashes and this is very light very whitish ashes 
and when we uh, add it with H2O that is water we get MgOH twice and this is called magnesium hydroxide and last to last year and last year we have been learning in acids and bases that MgOH that is magnesium hydroxide is a very common um, base which is present in milk of magnesium. So we can say that oxides of metals that is oxides formed from metals are basic. Another example is iron. We know rust. So even iron rusts and all type of metals also rust like copper also. So iron it will be iron rust in the process in the presence of oxygen and moisture. So it we'll be seeing how rust forms. So it will be Fe that is iron plus O2 that is oxygen plus H2O and this will form rust. So this is how rust forms. Now we'll be seeing how copper rust forms. So when we see copper vessels, uh, uh, like vessels or utensils made of copper, when they're exposed to moist air, that is to oxygen and moisture, that is H2O, then they get a green material coating. This green material is a mixture of copper hydroxide and copper carbonate. That is copper hydroxide is Cu. OH twice and copper carbonate is CuCO3. So this the addition of these both gives to a green coating. Like how we have seen the rust of iron gives a brownish red um, reddish brown coating. Like this the mixture of these both give rise to a coating of um, like greenish color. So how does this happen? We will see here copper plus H2O that is moist air plus CO2 plus O2 so that means copper plus water plus carbon dioxide plus oxygen will give rise to copper hydroxide plus copper carbonate and this is the greenish coating or the rust of copper. So now we have successfully seen that here COH2 is there. So that means this is a base because OH is also there. And even in magnesium we have seen this. So that we can say that all metals when react with, uh, with oxygen give rise to basic, um, give to basic oxides. So metals. metals have basic oxides okay now we have to see non-metals okay now we have to check with non-metals sulfur is a very common non-metal and there's an activity related to it that is activity 4.4 4. so in that it is said that when sulfur powder is burned then it uh, is burnt that, uh, just like how magnesium reacts with oxygen in the process of burning just the uh, same like that sulfur also bur uh, burns and reacts with oxygen and forms sulfur dioxide so it will be S plus O2 equals sulfur dioxide SO2 and when and then they keep the SO2 in a tumbler and when SO2 is added with H2O or with mixed with water, it forms H2SO3. That is sulfurous acid. It's not sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Sulfurous acid is H2SO3. So this is also an acid. So now we have seen that acid, acidic nature uh, is in non-metals. So when non-metals react with oxygen, they become acidic. So Non-metals are acidic. Now, we have to check how it reacts with water. 
now we have to see how it re- uh, how metals and non metals react with water so you know sodium we have been seeing that when sodium metal is put in water so it reacts vigorously and fire and very high amount of heat is produced and the water catches fire so this is a very this is um, a metal, sodium is a metal which reacts vigorously but other metals do not do so just like iron if you put iron in water it slowly gets rusted it slowly slowly gets rusted not very fastly it doesn't vi- uh, vigorously react and met- uh, uh, non metals some non metals react but they also do very slowly and but most of the non metals are very react vigorously in air so one of them is phosphorus phosphorus is a non metal and when it, and when it uh, it's exposed to air it also reacts very vigorously and a high uh, amount of energy is produced so sodium uh, uh, vigorously reacts with water thus it is kept in kerosene it's stored in kerosene and phosphorus is kept in water so that it, because it doesn't react vigorously with water now we have to see reaction with acids Now for checking how it re- how metals and non-metals react with acids we have to take some examples now take magnesium if we put magnesium or iron or any type of metal is given an activity 4.6 it can be checked in a laboratory in a chemistry lab so when these are put in acids they react and a pop sound comes the how is the, what is the why is there there a pop noise so let's see so when metals are put in acids they react and the pop sound comes because hydrogen is produced and when hydrogen gas tries to come out the pop sound comes so metals react with acids and produce hydrogen gas and that is why a pop sound comes and non metals non metals generally do not react with acids and they stay as it is there are some metals which only um, which only react with a particular type of acid now for example copper copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid but it uh, on heating it reacts with sulfuric acid now we have to see bases as demonstrated in activity 4.7 you can see that just like how the reaction with acids went same thing happened in, even in the reaction with bases so what is them it is again a pop sound this uh, pop sound has come when you react a metal with sodium hydroxide which is a base so when you react it with a base again hydrogen gas is produced and this hydrogen gas when it tries to escape the pop sound comes and the way non metals react with bases are very complex and cannot be told in, in this way and it, has, it needs a more qualification and more um, thinking and it's very complex now we have to see displacement reaction what is displacement reaction before we go to definition it's better if we see some formulas and examples given so we have been seeing the reaction of copper sulfate and iron um, iron blade or iron nail so we have seen in grade 7 that a, a activity was performed in which we saw that the iron nail was submerged or put in a copper sulfate and soon we saw that the copper sulfate from uh, from the liquid form became and got deposited on the iron nail and the copper sulfate become iron sulfate so let us see again two two examples so in the activity 4.8 we can see that the first two uh, first two um have a change in them and the last three don't we will see this so first one um, is the mixture of copper sulfate that is cuso4 copper sulfate plus zinc zinc granules mean zinc grains so they put zinc so when these uh, get reacted we know that zinc is more reactive than copper if you if you would have seen the co- uh, reactivity series then in that zinc comes above copper so this means that this is um, s- um copper sulfate is in aqueous uh, aqueous solution aqueous solution means it's in a salt formation or in a very liquid form so that means any metal um any liquid form of a metal which is lower than the other metal um is there then it's going to be replaced we will uh, we will see this more better so copper sulfate plus zinc will become zinc sulfate plus copper so what has happened the correct opposite has happened zinc has 
replaced copper from its position and has taken its position how has this happened because copper is less reactive than zinc and zinc is more reactive and thus zinc has um, removed um, copper from its aqueous or salt solution and has made it into a solid form so this will be aqueous and this will be solid and this will be aqueous and this will be solid so now second this is what we saw last year this will be copper sulfate which is aqueous plus iron fe that is solid that is it can be iron nail this will become sorry it's not an equal to it will be arrow which will become fe SO4 that is iron sulfate plus copper so again this will become solid and this will become aqueous so what we saw here we again saw that uh, this time iron has replaced copper so why is this because copper is less reactive than iron also and um, now in the other example we can see that it's, uh, there is not any change why now if it is going to be zinc sulfate zinc sulfate plus copper there will be no change no change why if reaction displacement reaction has happened in the other two the first one was copper sulfate plus zinc this time it's zinc plus sulfate plus copper it's just the opposite then why can't re uh, reaction take place because copper is less reactive and it is metal only the less reactive and aqueous solution can be reacted or removed uh, but here zinc is more reactive than copper and is an aqueous solution so it cannot be removed now if you take the same thing like iron sulfate plus copper still there will be no change because iron is more reactive and is an aqueous solution and so it cannot be removed okay now we will be seeing some uses for new knowledge so now we saw that science is not arbitrary that means if a um, more rea less reactive metal has been removed that doesn't mean a more reactive metal also can be removed it is just that a more reactive metal can replace a less reactive but a less reactive one cannot replace a more reactive so that is how science works now uses of metals and non metals we know that metals are used in making a lot of variety they are used in making machinery automobiles aeroplanes trains satellite industrial gadgets cooking utensils water boilers etc they have an endless list of things made from metals because metals are hard lustrous malleable ductile and all of the physical properties make them a very good one for packaging and for uses and even the chemical properties uh, help them to not only uh, to sustain um, in the work Now non-metals. Non-metals they ha um, have also their own benefits. Some of them is like non-metals is essential for our life because what we inhale is non-metals. We inhale oxygen, carbon, etc., and they are non-metals. And even non-metals are used as fertilizers. So mainly non-metal uh, non-metals are those things which make our life sustainable. and because of which we are there and another usage is non metals are used in water purification processes like chlorine chlorine tablets are put uh, and uh, potassium uh, um, potassium um, pieces are put for water, to make water more purified the non metal uh, non metal is used uh, in uh, making antiseptics antiseptics for our um, needs in medical uses non metals are also used in making crackers that we use as fireworks so there are endless use for non materials the non metals too so here our chapter materials metals and non metals finish and this was a long chapter but a very easy one hope you liked it if you liked it then please like share and subscribe it thank you